Hi there, this is Jim the Keys bartender coming to you with another, I'd hate to say, I'd, I want to say exciting episode, but well, you know, you're going to have to be the judge of that, listener. I'm here with Lee Sharp, which makes it more exciting. Hey, Lee. Yeah. What's going All on? right. You're yeah, in, man. Absolutely. The, yeah. Um, I'm in Key Largo. You're in Almorada. It's raining here. Is it sunny down there? It is. That's unfortunate that it's raining there because I was going to go out on a boat later yep, on today. It's a well thunderstorm. So. Oh crap! Oh right. yeah, yeah. That's what that's what's happening here. Let me wait. Let's see if we can add somebody here. I can't see where I can add this. I'm going to try to call Jim. Uh, All right. You know. Here, where is that? There we go. Oh, I'll bring this up. We're going to call Jim Brock, Lee's friend. So, um, yeah, my buddy. Lee, you pay any, uh, uh, g- did you play any gigs this past weekend? No? Yeah, I played over at the uh, Shump Shack. Yeah. Uh, this in Ala And uh, had a nice little tent set up for me and whatnot. And, nice calm day it wasn't super hot or anything it was just yeah. nice and nice and cool breeze yeah are you still there maybe I'm it worked out. I'm calling Jim I am still I, here can you hear me yep I'm calling okay. Jim right now so if he joins in he joins in so how was it you were at the shrimp track I know that and how about Sunday yeah, it's right across the street from uh, Woody's and oh. uh which is a wonderful cabaret. And it told a uh, uh, gentleman. Your call has been forwarded to an oh, automatic go. voice message system. Oh, Jim says nine it's zero one five Hello? one two three four nine you there, Jim? seven. Is yeah, I hear you. Available. Well, tone, that's weird. Please record your message. When you have finished recording, Am you I? may hang up or press one for more options. <laughs> How are you on? Yeah. So Jim's uh, there. I, Lee's I, there. I can I can still hear you. Jim is not there. He, his thing went to voicemail. Oh, it yeah. said Jim joined. Okay, I guess it, not. It that. does. Okay. No, no, his went to voicemail. I, heard I thought. It. Yeah. Okay. Well, so. we'll um, we'll just continue on. So you mentioned the gentlemen's club, the uh, Woodies. Yeah, Were there any ladies? There. Did any beautiful ladies come? Or if it was a normal day, that would be great. Uh, but it's it's not a normal day anywhere. So, but so they were closed as usual. Um, oh yeah, no couch for the last dances. A couple of months. Yeah, I guess probably not. I posted not. a show yesterday that said a. Uh, a, a chat with two sex workers. Right? Okay. But it wasn't. Because some guy joined the show, some um, gentleman uh, from Nova Scotia. We d- I did a live show uh, last week. Were you the one on that, or was that with Steve? No, that was Steve. So uh, we're doing, I was doing a live do show. What? I was doing a live show with Steve and this gentleman from Nova Scotia, J. Ron. That's his name, J. Ron. Uh, don't get too excited, Lee. He wasn't. Uh, he was. He he looked to be about my age. He was a uh, a white guy from Nova Scotia. What could be more exciting than that, right? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't know. There there are many many of. Uh, black people in Nova Scotia anyway. So, you didn't so really he even said when I do a live show, when I do a live show, he asked if Steve and I were cooks because I was talking about restaurants mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And then I'm thinking, well, how the hell? Um, wow. Is that you? Are you calling my regular number? Oh, this is Jim. Jim's calling. I got to try again. Maybe I'll call this number. Um, Jim may call okay. you. I'm going to. What I'm going to do is attempt to call him again from... Oh, there he is. Is he there? 
going to try to call him again. Oh, he's on hold. Jim? Oh, maybe I have to call that number again. Dial pad. What's his okay. number? Let me look at that. This is right. fun. Technology in action, huh? Hey, we learn a little bit every day. I know it's 901. Well, Jim, if you're li well, he's not listening because we're not live. Let's see. And you got the list of the things we're going to talk about. Is that why you started bringing that up? Or are you well, just that, sad that, that it happened to be, you know, I'm trying to tie it all together. So, uh huh. Um, he's gonna. Uh, I'm gonna text him right now. He's gonna call you back. Now. I'm calling. Him, no, he. I'm. He's calling me on my phone. He's trying to call me back, and it, it shows this phone number, but it isn't this phone number. You get it? Not really. No. Well, but it's it's Skype. He said, he said his phone didn't ring. Well, you know he what? I think I ring. called. I think I called somebody. But now I'm calling. He may he may pick up. It's well, it's, I'm calling three four five one two three four nine seven. But uh, so the gentleman here he is calling. You have again. reached the maximum time permitted for recording your message. Okay. If you are satisfied with your message, I, press um, one to listen oh. to your message. Press two to erase and re-record. Yeah. Well, this is interesting. Are you there? Now Lee's not there. Lee, you got to be there. I see your name. Call you again. Well, there's a thunderstorm going, so who knows what's going on. Let me call him back. Did you hang up, Lee, to call somebody? Oh, yeah. So this is the... Uh, well, okay, Lee, just pick up. I'm going to tell him he can't, he can't, uh, Lee, okay. Lee, did you yeah. try to call Jim without, I tried adding him on the phone call. It's not, it's not working. So, wow. yeah, okay. I, I call, I leave a number. Let's see. Jim Brock chatted nine minutes ago. I'm trying one more time. Let me see. Okay. Add here. We'll try it. It says Jim Brock. Oh, it's, I think this is his cell phone thing, but we'll see. He says Jim Brock has joined. Right. Hello? Hey, how's it going? There he is. Right on. Man, technology blows sometimes. It really does. I hate to say that. Are you there, Jim? It really does. Yeah, I, I'm here. I Can you hear me? Yeah, I called you a couple times, and I what happens is yeah, I don't know the don't number know you're on. calling is my cell phone, and I'm calling actually on Skype, and it shows my phone number, just so people pick up. Okay. Oh, gotcha. It actually isn't that number, and in order, I guess Skype, you it would just show. Skype has a an alphanumeric number that it shows for most people. So we were talking, Lee was disappointed. He was playing a gig down in Amarada and right across from where he playing a gig is uh, a gentleman's club called Woody's. And because of the restrictions right now, I don't know. They're saying gyms can reopen and stuff like that, but I don't know. Uh, that is the most, uh, it's not the most intimate of intimate. You know, intimate would be a brothel. Uh, but you are pretty much, when you're talking couch dance, you are putting body on body with uh, strip sure. poker cups, right? Absolutely. Are you yeah. familiar with them, it's, Jim? I don't know. I don't want to get you in trouble. No, I, well, I, I've been, but I'm just not a big fan of strip clubs. It's just, to me, it's, I don't know. I don't know. It just seems a little unsanitary, but you know. Oh, I, I, uh, I, I, I I agree. I agree. Uh, the the uh, guy in committed relationship with his with a wife and a daughter says it's horrible and stuff like that. But their other guy in me who um, doesn't doesn't feel the same way. Sure. 
Well, you know, the other I guy mean, it's, me it's, would just uh, be perfectly fine with uh, uh, a twenty-something uh, woman. Uh, not no no insult to any transgendered or anybody, but you know, doing. I know, and it's I'm, it's misogynist. It's misogynistic to think that way, but uh, it, no, it, it's it, it is. I'm not going to kid yeah. myself. I think it'd be purely it'd be disingenuous for me to say that is horrible. It's just like <laughs> the way I feel about boxing. I I think it's barbaric. The leftover boxing and MMA is leftover from glad it's gladiatorial in, in its nature. Do I like to see it? Yeah. <laughs> I realize two two parts yeah. is that Miss uh what's it, Doctor Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Wow. Well, Lee, you were talking about it. I know things. you I know Lee loves uh gentlemen's clubs. Uh I I I've 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 been I've I've frequented uh, a couple and I've dated a couple of their employees. Uh, oh. Um, oh well the doorman doesn't so. count, buddy. But uh Hello. That was a that was meant as a joke. I know, I know, I know. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, strip clubs used to be the joint, but I don't really care anymore. But you know, you mentioned it. A party it's there. a Freudian in nature. You mentioned that you were at the shrimp shack. I know it was right across the street from you, and that it's closed. But your mind did wander, probably. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering if Silver was going to you know, someone's got to clean those poles, you know, so, you know. Okay. So if I maybe check those guys out. Yeah, and Jim, I do agree. It's a it's a perfect place, a perfect place to transfer uh, any communicable disease uh, that you can think of, especially something as easily transferable as the COVID-19. But I can't think sure, of an industry... And- I can't think of an industry other than uh, legalized prostitution that was would be more affected by it. Yeah, well, you know, I uh, if I'm going to the strip club, I think COVID nineteen is probably the last thing on my mind, to be honest with you. But uh, it's uh, <laughs> I uh, like Lee. I've actually uh, spent a little bit of quality time with some employees as well. You know, back in my younger years, so. Mm-hmm. I can't, you know, it would be uh, disingenuous for me as well to, you know, and, and hypocritical for me, <laughs> you know, to pass any type of judgment. It's just not my, uh, really not my scene. And plus, uh, as a uh, as a father to two daughters, one of whom is 19, the other who is almost 17, mm-hmm. you know, seeing 20-year-old 20, 20 girls isn't the same as it used to be, you know, so... No, that's good. I mean, if you can, I just, um, I, I agree with you. I agree with you a hundred percent that, um, it's, but you know, obviously if every guy who had like me, I have a 13 year old daughter, uh, thought the proper way, then there would be no, uh, half the business would disappear in, uh, oh, of course. those places. Yeah. So, um, I, there's two ways of well, dealing they, with it. I don't go. I don't frequent those places, but I don't deny the attraction. And I'm not saying other people are hypocrites. Sure. I'm talking. About, I'm just talking about myself. I was. I'm just talking about myself. Right. And when recently, recently, last spring, I was in uh, Key West, and I did a show with a friend of mine, the owner of uh, Smugglers uh, Distillery. And he, he makes uh, bourbons and other Key West smugglers. And when we were we were uh, at a bar across the street from, I think it's called the Red Garter, a gentleman's club. Uh, and, and we had about, we had an hour before we did a show from Irish Cabins. And I went over there on a whim. I went to the... Uh, the manager and I mentioned, "Hey, would you consider doing a show from your place?" And he was enthusiastic about it. I said, "You know, there won't be any video or anything like that. So when we get started, it'd be all audio." And you know that would disappoint a lot of people. But how many places can do 
you know, except for, you know, those bogus uh, porn sites do a legitimate video from a, uh, a gentleman's club. And who would allow it? It would it'd be a killing business. But audio, what is perfect, right? Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I don't know what I was thinking because there was no way I could do the best show possible without getting – I wouldn't get canned from – the sensors I'd get canned from my home if I did a really good show. So, uh, but I would, uh, I didn't, I didn't intend to have the show begin the first team, 15 minutes of it talking about strip clubs. Uh, that was, um, and I'm going to blame it on Lee, but it's not Lee's fault. It's, Thank uh, you. The fault is in, the fault is me hearing about a strip club and remembering fondly those those days uh, of yore when I used to go there and stuff like that. So I I apologize. Well, so, in, um, in Memphis, in Memphis we don't call them strip clubs. You call them gentlemen's club, or what do you call them? No, we we call them shake joints. 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 J U N T. Yeah. J. Junt. Right. What does Junt stand for? Uh, basically, it's another way to say joint. And, and now, you know how you know how words develop. One person says it one way, and it's not, not cool anymore because someone else will pick it up and they change oh. it another. So most of us try to call oh. the Junt. You know, I didn't jant. understand. Are you on a speaker, Lee? I am. Okay, so it's not as good as being on a regular phone. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Let me, yeah, let me take that's care all right. Of that real quick. I I I needed to punt that out to you. Okay. I'm you said I, you noticed yeah, I said punt. Seconds. I said punt instead of point because yeah. from Philadelphia instead of saying point we say punt. Uh, oh, is that right? No, I'm just kidding, man. Yeah. Junt, shake, shake, junt, and junt, uh, shake, junt, and it doesn't even incorporate any of the letters that. The, any of the vowels, you use a completely different vowel. In it. Okay, so a shake junt. Um, okay, down. yeah, that sounds like some something here in the fifties, and there'd be a fan dancer in there, like a, a Gypsy Rose Lee uh, lady. You know, the fan dancer do this thing where if you know she's naked behind the fans, and she's just yeah, that's a shitty shake junt. Yeah, that's a shake junt. That's what yeah. you, you see that that stuff, and you turn it around, and every time you think you're going to see something, the fan comes down, right? Yeah. Now, a, a true to life, a true to life shake junk in Memphis is where you get like five dollar dances. Well, I think you're. That's, well, yeah. you haven't been in there for a while. Now it's twenty dollars, I think. Right. Yeah. Well, this is. That, I'm just saying. That, the Shake John is more or less lower class. Uh, oh. You know, it, it wouldn't oh. be called a gentleman's club because there's not a, there's a gentleman's never oh, even walked well, in that place. Then I, then I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking Correct. about. There's Jack's Place on Tarsdale Avenue in yeah. Philadelphia, and they uh, that was a uh, that was a uh, a strip club. It was a strip club. It was a bar <laughs> with a small stage and a pole. And one time I went in there after jury duty, and um, there, was, there was an obviously six-month uh, pregnant woman on the pole, or she had uh, cirrhosis, oh, wow. of the, or she had cirrhosis of the liver. Uh, so, yeah, and you know, either she would fit in, she might fit into that Woody's strip club um, down in Amarada. I still am courting hey. them to do a show. But I don't know. I'm. I don't know if I'd be willing to say the beautiful ladies of Woody's, because I'm not going to say it because I have yet to see a beautiful lady in Woody's. I, let Let me say I've been in there three times in thirteen uh-huh. years. You have. Hey, one second, guys. I'll be right back. Okay. Sure. So wait, we're going to explore this a little. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, Lee, you heard that there was a uh, an a, you saw that there was a you thought was a beautiful lady. Uh, yes. You uh, thought she was a lady? And, uh, she was a lady, for sure, for sure. Okay, um, can't be sure of that. But, um, the, uh, 
we never did anything outside of the club, and and and, and so I, I do see what you're saying. What you what you do in the club? Good looking lady. What you do? What you do in the club? Absolutely nothing. Just well, sat there on. and, you do? and you do? and watch she came and watch she came people. In. Did she? Um, did you? Did you pay for her attention? Well, there were drinks, so yes. Oh, that's but it. I drinks. Did not you go bought her back drinks. Into the thing. You bought her drinks. Not yeah. Not. Absolutely. Yeah. She came okay. over, and I was with my other buddy, and uh, you know, and like he's he's a really good looking guy, and so by proxy, uh, you know, I got some of the leftovers that mm-hmm. came over to me, and I bought, but I only bought the one girl two drinks. What the one? And she gave me her, and she gave me her phone number. I thought it was a fake one. Now she gave me the real one. So, oh. There you go. Oh, really? Sometimes it does work. Sometimes it does work out. But um. Oh, yeah. so you found out it was a real number. What happened? Well, I didn't remember her name, first of all. Uh, I just put her in there as Roller Girl because she had roller skating. She was roller and skating? She has a very complicated name. It's like, yeah, she, was, she had roller skates the whole time. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, that's uh, <laughs> that was her thing. She was roller, roller skates. So, but you never called her. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. I did. Um, she was she was very pretty, but I understand that black lights and uh, a couple of crown royal apples later, people can be a little bit more attractive. I understand this. Oh, you saw her. But uh, oh, you saw her. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, no, no, it, 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 she still looked great. So, oh, you met her. Saying. Okay, so what? Uh, you, you know, you're making me drag this out of you. So, you called her up, arranged for a meeting. Yeah, before work, before she went to work, and before I went to work. She Where'd looked, looked great. Where did you meet her? Uh, just for coffee or tea. I had a tea, and, uh, no. and then, yeah. And, and why um, didn't you call back? Why? Why, why didn't you call back? She was in Fort Lauderdale. So, I didn't realize that. Oh. So, too far. Geographic? Oh, she wasn't that good looking. She wasn't 90 miles good looking. No. I mean, yeah, but, I mean, it, it, it's far, man. Just looking at traffic. I'm not so, sure. It could be, I'm not it could sure be anybody's hours. 90 miles good looking. Oh, my God. You guys, oh, well, you know what? You guys are musicians and stuff like that. If a girl was good looking, I mean, I've driven 40 miles. And then I said, wait a second. Uh, this is uh, an effort. I'm sure it goes the other way with girls, but. Uh, okay. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I'm never going to buy this thing yet. You know, you, it's hard to meet a girl if you can. I mean, you're in the Keys. It's hard to meet a girl down here. And you're, I right. mean, Memphis, Memphis, you have. A lot more opportunities, but down here, and you're driving 90 miles. If you move to certain parts of Australia, you're going to have to drive like 150 miles, 200 miles to meet a girl. You know? Yeah, that would suck. Yeah, it would suck. I mean, well, there's parts. Th- there's that one city of- that's in the middle of nowhere. Perth is Perth in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> what? Yeah, Perth is actually the most remote. Large city on the planet. Yeah. So yeah, uh, you, if you met a like girl and she's not from two thousand miles, you to might as well just city. say forget about it. You know. Yeah. Oh, Jim, I'm sorry, we cut you off. Are you back? No. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the way it is here in Meridian, Mississippi. You kind of have to drive to Jackson or Hattiesburg. So I might have spoken too soon when I said no one is ninety miles pretty, but I still. Well, you know what, Jim? That, the good, nice you know, thing about it. If you had to drive ninety miles, are you are you married? No. Okay. Now, if you go now, if you go and see drive ninety miles, you can just say, "Listen, I have record that said I, no one's ninety miles pretty." And obviously, I think you're ninety miles pretty because I drove ninety miles. Okay. Sure. And you yeah. can throw that in. That Even could be round trip. Close, it could be forty five miles because you have to drive back. Yeah. So. Well, I, you know, since we're talking about, uh, since we've been talking about sex work, I have a funny story. Yeah. Um, so my cell phone, my cell phone number that I got three years ago, 
Uh-huh. Um, as soon as I got the number, I was getting all these crazy texts all hours of the night. And the text would be like, are you available? Uh, where are you tonight? Uh, do you want to hook up? Uh, things like that. And I'm like, dude, leave me alone. You know, this went on for a while. And finally, I said, what in the fuck is going on? So I, uh, I Googled my phone number, and apparently my phone number used to belong to a call girl in Memphis. Oh, and what's that? I, I, I think it was, uh, I think it was Megan. Anyway, okay. so eventually the calls and the text stopped. Well, a few days ago, they started again. Really? Yeah. And I'm like, dude, please leave me alone. Wait, how so long? How, on like, how long? How long? How long have you had the number? When did those phone calls start? Three years ago. Oh my God! That person hasn't been in contact for three years with this uh, person, and they're trying right. to contact them again. Oh, the person is really uh, hard up. If you're thinking yeah, that and a call girl is going to have the same phone number for three years, yeah. Well, so I went on the so I went on the call girl website. You know, it's like a it's like a Memphis Escorts or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I uh, I sent him an email. I said, listen, an escort called Megan doesn't have this phone number anymore. Please take it off the website because I'm tired of getting uh, text messages and calls from horny weirdos. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah, no response, nothing. So You should, if they call back and say, call me, and you should give that, you know, this is Sergeant uh, O'Neill, the Memphis Police Department. Can I help you? That would be the perfect thing. Yeah, right. It's okay. Just so, it's just so strange. It's like of all the, you know, of all the phone numbers that I could have gotten, I got the call girl's number. Yeah, I get right. a, I get and, uh, calls for an appointment. Uh, it, it's weird to know. Yeah. It, I was just saying, it, it's weird to, uh, uh, to, to think that like the call girl website email guy isn't really up on his shit. Well, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, a, li- it's right? a listing service, and <laughs> yeah. probably every time someone calls through it, they get a percentage or something like that. Just like an affiliate, it's affiliate. Yeah, I, you know. So. Yeah. So, I well, guess that you know it's pretty big business, and I don't. It's like it. it's like Grubhub. You get a percentage. So, or. You know. <laughs> Well, you know, if you ever have a hard sure. up for cash, uh, Jim, you got it. You do have uh, resources available to you now. But um, the uh, yeah, I'm just wait. What the hell was I? We were talking about. We were talking about the um, the show. I was doing a live show, Jim, and the guy that started chatting with me on the app that I podcast on said, "Ask if we were cooks," and I said, "No, this is you know, I'm thinking this is the Florida Keys bartender." A podcast why in hell would you think I'm a cook and then he goes all I saw was the name of the show so the it's weird because it pops up as a live show he randomly clicked on it uh, which the title of the show I don't know why he would randomly click on the title of the show so I thought if next time I did a, uh, a live show I'll just make it more titillating the title and, and mine was uh Originally, I was going to go with a private conversation between two prostitutes, but then I said uh, chat with two sex workers, and uh, I didn't. It wasn't a chat with two sex workers, and I put it on live, and no one, uh, no one uh, started chatting with it. I thought, oh well, if anybody's going to randomly click on something, and they want to chat, you know, that's the one to chat with. And I put chat in there, and they never, it never worked. I thought that was a way to do it, and I always thought sex sells. Well, it doesn't always sell, you know. Uh, no. We are, I did line up, uh, there's a local store, it's called the Lover's Boutique, and I might, uh, I, uh, I, had, I spoke to the owners, both the owners, and they want to do a show from there. Uh, I approached them about doing a show, and the, guys, the guy was concerned that I wouldn't be able to uh, talk about, 
you know, use talk about the items he has in the store. I said, I can say whatever I want. There's, I mean, except besides, no, I can't hate, hate speech, probably can't to hate speech, but there's no limit on that. And the guy got excited about it. So I thought about, you know, the guy says, oh, well, why don't we wait until things open up here? And I said, what? You're crazy. I'm thinking of the guy. You should be doing it now because what could be more important right now than the items you sell when people are in stay-at-home mode? Right? Sex toys. Right. Yeah. Um, especially for women. Sells you know what I mean? And, and got right? You guys, you got um, – I mean, I don't know if the stores sell anything really for guys that are – as uh, good at doing their job as the things they sell that women use, right? It's I mean, I fine. guess what do you for mean guys, you can just use a little porn, but you can get that off the internet, right? They don't sell live-size uh, uh, sex dolls or anything like that, which uh, are you familiar with those? I'm not trying to be intriguing or, or titillating right here. I'm just saying that... I I just think that's probably I th- think that's being sold. That's probably seen a boost in those sales, much like alcohol. Um, but I think they call marital aids, but they're actually sex toys. I think they sell probably sell like uh, Mar- hotcakes, right? Marital aids. You know, you know, language is everything, really, because um, like. For example, you know, back in the day, if you couldn't get an erection, you were impotent. Mm-hmm. But then when they wanted to start selling their product, they want to start pushing the pills, they start calling it ED, erectile dysfunction. Yeah. And that's a little more politically correct. Mm-hmm. All in yeah. the language. Uh, you know, uh, prostitution is now called sex work. Uh-huh. You know, we have to be a little more politically correct. And it's just, language is everything. It is a, you know, as a former writer, you know, journalist it's it's just amazing how they take words and they change it up and everything's just they can make money off of it you know you know, like, you know that's funny that you mentioned impotence uh jim and uh i think no uh i think that that language the one thing uh there's a lot of things where guys objectify women but i think there's probably some, nothing more harmful than impotence if you think about a man's reaction to whoever they're attracted to or what to, who, who they're supposed to uh, have romantic relationships with or, or sexual relationship with, they have to be excited with it or it, nothing occurs. So, I mean, the way they call it, sure. it's like, where does the fault lie? Does the fault lie in the person? Like the person, if you're looking at something, if you're not sexually attracted to something, there is no reason to get an erection. That does not get. That does not mean you're an impotent. You know, you may not be attracted right. to the person you're with. A guy. I mean, it could be a guy you're with, or it could be a woman you're with. If you're not attracted to him, you will not get an erection. If you're not, I. I really. I mean, it's, I'm not a sign. I am not. I did not go to school for this. I just have a life experience. I know what I know. I know how my body works. And if I'm not excited, I never understand Yeah, but that. you know what? Men are. Yeah, but men, you know, men are dogs. We'll lie with anything, you know. I mean, it. it <laughs> put, uh-huh. put enough alcohol in us and we really, you know, we're not very picky. Well, that'll inhibit. That'll cause, well, alcohol will also inhibit an erection, a, a, a strong turgid erection will be inhibited by alcohol but also some you know some something that's not exciting will will do that at least to me i mean so and there are things that people say i am attracted and they can't you know just because you know things don't come out the way you want it it's because you can if if you can go in the shower you know within a half hour Give someone a little uh, uh, material, um, let's say uh, visual aids, or or you know something. If they if they're not 
if there's not a reaction to that, then then maybe you can start talking about there being a some kind of dysfunction. So what ED does, ED still doesn't work. You don't automatically get an erection unless you have your excited. I know that too. Have you ever taken that, Lee? Uh, uh, a, a drug to make your stuff go go good. Well, that, it, it makes it or, or, have a longer sustained erection. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. How about you, Jim? Um, but there are also there are also other drugs that'll do that too. Oh yeah, but no. What do you mean? Not, other they're drugs? not legal though. Oh yeah. Um, no, I never have. Uh, I'm not uh, saying whether you needed it. I, I was just saying if you had, but you never had. Um. I'm sure there were times where I needed it, but uh, I uh, I take uh, I take an antidepressant, mm-hmm. so that helps. Kind of, you know, that actually helps me in that department. So, yeah. oh, but you know, there are, there are other things that you know that can uh, contribute to ED, such as anxiety. Yep. Like, a lot of men will have anxiety, like, say, that's the first time with a woman. Mm-hmm. And that anxiety, you're like, it's uh, it's not actually caused by anything physiological. It's just your, it's psychological. So, you know, that often happens. And a oh, lot right. of men will attribute right. that to, well, I There's have, a myriad, you know, there's a myriad not, of dysfunctions with that. Um, like, the first time you're with someone, there could be, like, you get overexcited. And then they call it premature. That's when you got what? too excited, right. and and so I mean, it's it's the mama ba- bear, baby bear, and papa bear thing, you know, too fast, too you know, not enough, or just right, right in the middle. So, um, you know, it, it is because there's for uh, a woman, and I'm not saying, and you know, they, we've been. They've been put in a bad situation many times when they're objectified and uh, all these things. But the one thing they didn't have to deal with is uh, they can choose to appear as if they're excited. And there's there's certain topical things you can do to pretend that you are excited. Right? There's an apparent sign when a guy is not excited. You know, yeah. There's an apparent sign, sure. And we're able to live. And and you know what? It's probably considering the way guys, some guys treat women. Uh, some guys may may deserve that, but the other guys, it's just, pretty, it's pretty sad. And luckily, you know, uh, I don't take it to heart. It's sometimes it's for some guys. I think some guys it's just because that just isn't the person for them. That just doesn't do well, it for him. I I think that is in the case. Some cases, sometimes it's a real physical uh, thing that happens. I understand that, but I think you know, and and with anxiety and there's all these things. But sometimes I truly believe that uh, if if getting an erection was just a decision, if it was just a decision, well, here. Yeah. Here is an issue. Here's an issue with erectile dysfunction as well. Um, and it, it happens with a lot of younger men. Yeah. Is uh, they become desensitized with pornography, and a lot oh. of people think this is bullshit and, it, and it's fake science, but it's not. Because when you uh, when you're exposed to pornography for long periods of time, and you're overstimulated. For so uh-huh. long, Correct. regular sex is, and the regular sex isn't enough. Wow, you know, yeah. you know, it's, it's, right. it's just like a drug. You have to, you know, you have to have more and more and more, and then all of a sudden, it's like I can't even make my balls move unless you know there's a, a strobe light and a gun in the room. You know, it's like what the fuck? And so, a finger up your ass. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Maybe I mean maybe um, uh, uh, you know non-binary is the way to go. What do you um, maybe? Uh, 
that, that that's another word that that um, I know what about thrown around now. Yeah, yeah, because transgender or or, or or not, it's just a better word to say somehow. I don't know why, but it's that's what you're supposed to say. So to them or they. Or oh, there's some, I mean, wait, listen, that's whatever floats your boat. That's, that is like, that it is a, a spectrum for people, but that's, that's an interesting sure. concept. There's a myriad of things that can occur. There's uh, people that, well, for me, it was under, I was underexposed to uh, uh, that when I was younger. So To them. To sex, you know, and the images and you have to say like them. that. I was underexposed, so uh, I may have been a little quicker to the draw in the beginning. And some other guys there over 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 overly uh, desensitized to it. So I understand that. But hey, I, you know, what? I didn't intend. This is a good topic, but there's probably better shows for that than this. But I'm there's sure. probably Absolutely. yeah. But it doesn't mean it isn't a concern. So, but I did make that show. It turned out that show, you know, people don't necessarily nowadays, if they want to hear a dirty show and stuff like that, there's plenty of porn out there on the Internet. So they don't have to put on a podcast to hear two prostitutes talk to each other. They can actually go and just Google two prostitutes talking to each other. And there's probably 100 uh, YouTube things uh, to do. So that aspect of trying yeah. to get listeners did not work for me. <laughs> so. And that whole roundabout story, the whole 40 minutes of doing that. I wanted to, the last thing I wanted to talk about, even though I talked about a, a, a set of sound points, the Facebook just introduced uh, an avatar tool. Um, I don't know if either of you are familiar with it. It's just. No. Okay. Well, I'm going to give it to you. It's uh, building an avatar is building yourself building yourself an animated version of yourself, right? And they do it on a lot of different apps. There's a lot of, you've probably been approached by that. You've seen that where you can build, you know, you, you pick your hair, the shape of your head, the shape of your mouth, the shape of your eyes, your eye color, your hairstyle, uh, your hair color, your body shape, and, you know, your, 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 your skin tone. Uh, lines in your skin. I mean, you do all these aspects. It's not to the T, but you're building, you're building an animated avatar, right? And just the way you build, just the way you choose to build your avatar, it's probably really telling of what you think about yourself or, or one, it could be, this is, if they do it, if they think they did it honestly, right? Then that's the way they think of themselves. If they do it the way they would want to look like, that's another thing. Okay? And then there's people that have they seem to do a pretty good job of putting it right in the middle. Is one of you on the road or something like that right now? Hello? Hello? Yeah, I can't really hear you anymore. Yeah. Like someone was uh, open up the window on the bus. Is that you, Jim? You doing laundry? You can hear me now. I was, I was outside. Can you hear me better now? Oh yeah, yeah. Are you near an airport? Oh. No, no. I was just outside. I guess maybe it was the wind was blowing. So oh, okay. Um. So, so there's three things you get out. You have someone that says, uh, "I think I look this way." I think you're still outside now, right? No, I went in. Hello? No, I went in. Oh. There's a lot I'm, of extra noise. Is that better? I went. Yes. A lot better. Yeah. Okay, cool. It sounded like, cool. yeah, it sound like a wind tunnel. So there's three things I suggested. It could be four, but there's the way you think you look, the way you want want to look, or the way you actually look. And I built one myself. I'm going to put it on there. I think I put myself a little too younger. I made my hair gray. Uh, they have a choice to put lines in your face because my, obviously my face was lo- unlined. They can even put, you can even put blemishes on your face. But the only blemish is like moles and stuff like that they're doing. I try to get the shape of the nose right, the shape of the eyes and the eye color, right? And I, but what they do is they don't, 
I don't think they're ever going to let you, if you're heavy or overly skinny, they're not going to allow you to do that. And they don't have one for someone that's handicapped, you know? Oh. They do have looks for people that have a non, like you, like Lee mentioned, a non-binary look. Oh, is it? Yeah, non-binary. So you're not ad- identifying I'm, I'm, as. So it kind of looks like a dude then. What? Or a girl. Yeah, but the, you so can't. So it looks like it, 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 it's. it's no. Yeah. You could be any skin tone, you know. My hair color looks slightly purple because I try to get it gray. I was trying to get it brownish gray. But they're, I'm not, I mean, I'm still, I still, I'd say I'm 50% brown, 50% gray in my hair. But I, I'm, it still makes me a little too good looking. Right? Right. I hear you. I'm happy with how I look. When I built my avatar, I thought it was too good looking. But that's the on that's the honest way. Now, there's other people I've seen their avatar and I go, Okay, you may have looked this way twenty years ago, but that's not you. So right, right. now, think about it. Twenty years ago when you were posting pictures, when was that they were starting to do uh, online dating? Or anything, people post the best pictures of themselves, an old picture of themselves, right? Yeah, people do that and a lot. Now, yeah. now people only represent some, now because of this introduction of Facebook, people get an introduction to someone else by meeting their avatar. All right. There was a movie, uh, not right. the movie Avatar. Yeah. There was a movie with Bruce Willis where people had their own. It was like a replicant, a more genetic, pure representation of themselves that's out there. And yeah, I saw that, and they just spent their life in some kind of cocoon living out there. But that's what it's I like on I would, Facebook. I think I would like that better. What? Your well, body? Because, because in that movie that you're talking about, uh, you, you, they're both really actually old. And... And they get to live their life, and they don't know the difference uh, because they can run around and be as fast well, as they I used mean, to some be. Some of them are old, stuff. some of them are unattractive, that, some are unattractive, some are overweight, some are unfit, and all this stuff. And they have this, you know, they they yeah, they get to live their life the way. Well, I mean, is that the point of life, though? I don't know. It's what you make it, I guess. And they make it. They made it. You know, um, it's like uh, there was another movie that um, that it doesn't have Bruce Willis in it, but he's in everything. It's uh, it's called Repo Men. I saw that one. The whole Jude yeah, Law. The whole point is like you have to try to stay alive. Jude Law and Forrest Whitaker, and yeah. but for a fee, you know, you get a new heart, you get a new liver, you get a new whatever. Um, but if you have enough money, you can also just go into like a, a virtual world and you just press the button. It was also like on Total Recall, also, so where you can just live your whole life just like that. I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, in the Matrix, in well, that's just my opinion. Elon Musk made a suggestion years ago before he went over to the dark side that we're living in the Matrix already. But the Avatar thing, I think, go. expresses someone's way they feel about themselves and what the intent. <laughs> So, like, I'm just going to show myself as an avatar. I mean, and it's, I'm not saying that your pictures, people, you know, you got girls on Instagram and, and all that stuff. All they do is post pictures of themselves. And after a while, because everyone's just posting pictures of themselves, you kind of get the feeling there's a girl, a pretty Russian girl that lives down here. And you know her, Lee. And all she does is post pictures of herself, right? Yep. Yeah, all she does, Jim, that's it. Post pictures as out, and I know for a fact the girl is a talented musician. Yep, she plays piano. Yep, and she, she never posts me. that. She, she never posted like that. Piano. She and she she plays it beautifully. And, yeah, she can do Chopin. Wow, if she wants to. Yeah, yeah, and I just think, wow, what, what? I mean, this is what this is. Uh, I, I think, you know, eventually, 
eventually, like uh, 10, 15 years from now, she's not going to be posting those pictures. And then they, she's going to be posting, you know, old pictures of herself and stuff like that. But she should, you know, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get this Kardashian kind of thing. And it's manifested well, in, that, in Avatar. The, let me jump in here. <laughs> See, I have a problem with all of that. Uh, the the avatars, the you know, the idea of you know living a life where we're in, you know, uh like that movie you were talking about with Bruce Willis. I mean, I have a problem with that, you know. I don't we've become this this rapid society where everything is you know, we put such a high premium on looks and status and you know, what do kids want to do now? They don't want to be doctors or lawyers or engineers, they wanna be uh, YouTube influencers. Yep. You know, it's like, no, no, that's not what it's about. You know, fame and, you know, Kardashian esque, you know, that's not, that's not what life is about. You know, I mean, what happened to having a, a, a good moral character? What happened to, you know, uh, uh, education and uh, a good work ethic and getting a, a and doing the right thing because it's the right thing. I mean, what happened to those things? I think we're losing our humanity to, you know, a a set of tits and abs or or a pair of abs. You know, I I just, I don't think that, I just think we're going in the wrong direction. And it just, it bothers me, especially as a parent. uh, Yeah. Well, there's, there's, I mean, look at the suicide rate among, among kids. Yeah. Well, first of all, if you don't look, if you if you don't look the way you think you're supposed to look, then there's a form of depression like there. If you do look the way, it's almost as bad as looking that way. If you look like the way you're supposed to look, then you're, then I think you might have just as long a downfall. Look at you ever seen um, Bridget Bardot? She one of the hottest women that was around yeah. in, the, in the '60s. And then all of a sudden, we seventies and eighties. Not you don't hear. I mean, I think she's still alive, but you don't see pictures of them and stuff like that. It's a long fall for people when they're dependent upon their talents, uh, whether it's their looks or their athletic prowess. In Philadelphia, one guy came up to me and tried to give me his old football card. He ended up being a running back for uh, the professional team in Philadelphia. At the, uh, it was the Eagles from the. 1960, and he told me, he goes, oh, I used to look like you and stuff. And I was never built like this guy was built when he was younger. But he's passing out his own cards right. and stuff like that. That I mean, the idea of, yes, some people will be famous for the way they look and and may be able to transition. I could pick one person, one person that success, successfully transferred the rest of their life, one person, for based on their looks. Uh, and there's probably others out there too, but Betty White, Betty White. Let me explain to you about. It. In the 1950s, oh, oh, if you saw pictures of Betty White, she was super hot, but she was also funny. Smoking, dude. Funny, had a beautiful voice. Yeah. I didn't know that. And now here she is. She carried up. You know why? Because she had character. It wasn't all about looks for her. It wasn't like that. She was funny. She did serious stuff. She was entertaining. And she just rode that all the way through, through the 50s, 60s, 70s, disappeared for a couple of years in there. And then after the 70s and stuff, did some stuff in the 80s, maybe stuff, and then reappeared uh, in the 21st century, a superstar, almost 100 years old. But that's not going to happen with the Kardashians. In a couple no. of years, Kim Kardashian. Oh, like and look what look what Bruce Jenner yeah. did to get make himself more relevant. I sorry, man. That uh, I maybe I shouldn't question that, but I I question his idea of. I do believe there are people that are transgender. I do believe, and I do believe that's a real thing. I don't know if he's a good representation of that. I think it's someone seeking attention. That person there. And that's controversial. I know it's controversial. But, uh, and, and the way he went after he became transgender, if you actually believe that that's his body went, image, he, he devoted himself to a movement that was so anti-woman, you know. Uh, 
Yeah. I know that's a little outrageous and stuff like that, but just the idea of the image and, and stuff like that. At the end, they don't really have anything to offer other than their looks and the avatar, the way you represent yourself as an avatar is a per- perfect way. It's a, If you're overinflating the way you think you are, uh, you, you're, you don't feel good about yourself, right? There's billions of dollars in, in making your actual self an avatar. That's, I mean, it's billions oh, of dollars. plastic surgery. Half beauty, the people down beauty. here. Yeah. I mean, well, health. I mean, literally half the people down here have it. Yeah. Um, I mean, seriously. Yeah, I know for a fact you're 65. There's absolutely zero way your hair is blonde. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but that is making your own personal avatar uh, for the way that you feel that you should look. I put on Facebook not too long ago, uh, there's like a, a few things that you shouldn't skimp on. And uh, like one of them was ketchup. And never skimp on ketchup. Don't be cheap on the ketchup. Don't be cheap on cheese. Uh, Ready? Don't be, you know, for a whole bunch of different things. Another one uh, that someone else that I, did, I didn't think about was boob jobs and facelifts. Yeah. Don't go to the guy next to the next to the school. Uh, you know, he's having a special. You know, uh-huh. uh, or, or or like LASIK surgery. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Don't don't go to that dude, man. Hey, yeah. Um, you know, go ahead and go to a reputable guy, but you're you're also making your own avatar of what you actually want to look like. I cannot say if I would ever do a facelift or a tuck. Or anything like that, because I'm not that old yet. So, but or or here's something better. What? Here, but, here's something better. Fuck the facelift and find something else that's going to give you purpose. Correct. Right. Well, I have music because you know what? Because one of these days you're going to be seventy fucking years old, and it's not going to matter. Right. So Correct. you know, I mean. I, the, the boob job I can understand because that's a thing with feminine, femininity, and a lot of women I, I can understand that I, I can. Mm-hmm. That's completely understandable. But you know the tuck, the facelifts, the the nose jobs, the this, the that. I mean it's, I mean some some cases, I guess I can understand. But when you're doing it just to be doing it. Because because well, you're you know you, you think that you're racing against the, the you know the clock. No, you know what I'm saying. I mean it's not all yeah. about looks. And uh-huh. if we continue to live like this, and we continue our culture, you know, if, if that's what it's all about, then then what the fuck? What are we telling the next generation? Well, yeah. the I, I, I think that, that there's a lot of seeing. empty. There's a lot of empty promises that are. Uh, left in those uh, things where you think that your your image is is really important i uh for instance for instance <clears throat> I've, I've said this since i was in in in, in high school um uh, obviously all person of color and i didn't understand and i was also going to be a doctor as well at some point but so i didn't understand why uh uh, uh white people or whoever else wanted to go outside and sit under the sun to get themselves an artificial look of health when they're actually really just killing themselves. To me, that didn't make any sense. Ever since high school, you go out there and you cook your stuff, you cook your skin. That's all you're doing. Mm -hmm. And, um, Mm -hmm. and skin cancer is the second, the highest form of cancer period. But now I'm going to go sun and let's put on some more oil. Let's get that soaked in there to give yourself an artificial look of health. And then, meanwhile, yeah. like, oh man, I got a tumor. Gotta go. Yeah, gotta get well, through this three rounds of chemo right quick. You know, they, so they, you're only yeah. fooling yourself. That that the final word on what people are willing to do was down here in Miami. It was about ten, eleven years ago. When I, a year after I got down here, there was a, uh, a person who had a clinic down here that did home um, kind of. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Not rhinoplasty, where they did the, uh, the lipo. They were doing uh, unlicensed lipo. And they were, they were, they were uh, 
putting all different stuff in people's <laughs> body, and it was incredible. It was horrible. But um, that 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 I think you're right. You got it all. You covered it all right with the avatars and stuff like that. And it's just the way people consume with image, and it's getting worse as time goes on. But a lot of it has to do with because we have access to. Uh, if you think about it. 60 years ago, 70 years ago, you had to take a picture, you had to get it posted, you, know, you had to get it developed, you do, do this, it was not something to do. Now you can take 200 of, easy to take 200 photos of yourself and then post them. Well, listen, we're at the end, it's an hour, and we wasted, uh, we wasted that on the uh, okay. on the thing, but that's not a waste, it really wasn't a waste. Uh, we spent a little time trying to get a hold of Jim. Uh, we're going to figure out Skype one of these times. And maybe be able to tight it, title it. I'm going to title the show. I don't even know what the title of the show. Right? To make it more appealing. I uh, I had, I could put the things, I could make the, if I want to make people the, um, oh, I can make it because I talked about a lady doing a lipo. I could say I want to do things to your butt. I'll put that in there. <laughs> There you yeah. go. I click on. <clears throat> yeah, I want to do things. And right at the end of the show, I actually did say something about someone doing something to someone's butt that got affected. Um, so uh, good times. Can we? Uh, you know, I'm I'm back to work, Jim. So I'm not as free as I uh, as I once was. But and I know everyone's schedule is probably going to be uh, getting more busy. But would you uh, maybe? I'll see if you're available next week, and we could talk about maybe uh, talk about the opening if you're around. Yeah, yeah, I'll be around. I'm going back to the hospital in two weeks, so um, yeah, I will be uh, I will be working regular hours in two weeks. But yeah, next week should be good. Okay. And how about you, Lee? Uh, I still don't have a job, so whenever. Okay, well, uh, listen, no. well, yeah. maybe we'll, well do something. By next week, I might. Maybe next Thursday. Might. Maybe Never Thursday, know. then. Well, uh, I'll talk to you then, Jim. I mean, uh, uh, Lee. I'll talk okay. to you Thursday. Sounds good. Okay. I'll cool, talk man. to you guys. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Lee. You bet. Uh, I'd you like bet. to thank uh, you listeners for uh, spending some time with us today. And if you're listening to while you're driving to work on the previous show, I said don't uh, keep, you know, keep your eyes on the road. Don't. Um, don't masturbate while you're driving. So uh, that's uh, always good practice. Safe. And then the word I couldn't remember was good hygiene, hand hygiene practices. Practice good high hand hygiene practices. Thank you, everyone. Right. Bye. Peace. I'm playing the music now. Bye. Yeah. Whoa. 